Are we talking about mastitis in dogs? So just like kind of a brief definition. Um, so mastitis just means inflammation of the breast tissue. Um, so if you break it up, mast, which is the prefix, refers to breast tissue or mammary glands, where itis, which is the suffix, just means inflammation. So kind of just an overview. Um, mastitis typically occurs within the first um, three weeks. Sorry, I have a typo. I meant to say lactation, not pregnancy. So it's usually in the first three weeks of lactation, though it can occur during pregnancy. Um, and you commonly have like a yellow discharge that'll come out of the mammary glands, um, and there may be an odor to it. So a good way to kind of know, like kind of catch it early, is actually look at the puppy's behavior. If the puppies don't seem to be gaining weight appropriately, that means they're not getting the proper nutrition from mom. So that's a common indicator that mastitis is present. Um, and then there's kind of two general types of mastitis in dogs. So there's a galactoastasis and acute septic mastitis. And I'll go into both those later. So with galactoastasis, um, it's also known as caked breasts. Um, usually affects dogs in late stages of pregnancy, so before lactation even occurs. Um, and milk will accumulate and descend into the teats. Um, so it kind of like, so you can see it gets red, angry, and it just kind of collects there. But there's no infection present. Um, so they won't have like the typical like fever, no signs um, of a typical infection. It's just more inflammation and it's painful. So and then there's also acute septic mastitis. Um, and this is where bacteria will enter the mammary glands. Um, and it can cause abscesses if it's left untreated and it can also be fatal. Um, and some stuff is kind of associated with acute. Um, it can be associated with acute metritis, which is an acute bacterial infection of the uterus and typically occurs within one to two weeks after um, partrition. So they're not always linked together, but sometimes they are associated when there's one, it'll cause the other. And then overall milk production will decline in this. Some general symptoms. Um, so you usually kind of see it around the teeth. It will be red, inflamed, just angry looking. Um, the dog might um, kind of appear like uncomfortable. There might be some pain. Um, the mammary glands will feel very firm to touch. Um, there might be some discoloration of the teeth. Um, mom might be lethargic. She might have weight loss. Again, the puppies will probably have some weight loss too. Um, there could be a fever, dehydration. Um, and usually with mastitis, moms, if it's kind of left untreated, will kind of try to avoid nursing their puppies. So sometimes this can lead to bad behavior around their puppies because they're kind of associating them with pain. So there might be growling, snapping. Um, and if left untreated, it can get kind of severe or even have septic shock, which is a widespread infection causing organ failure and dangerous low blood pressure. Um, it can also cause gangrene, um, which happens when like the body tissue dies and is just caused by a lack of blood flow. Um, another common um, symptom is kind of going with the fever. The teeth might be hot to the touch. It might kind of just feel radiation, um, heat radiating from it. So some general causes of mastitis, um, it's kind of like two broken up. Um, so there might be a common bacterial cause. So some common ones are like E. coli, staph, or um, streptococci. And that's where um, the bacteria can enter through the mammary glands through injury. So sometimes the teats might have some cracking around it, or if the puppies kind of scratch at it, that cause any type of abrasion in the teat, that's how bacteria can enter. And after a dog gets this once, is they're more prone to get it again. Um, and then another cause, because it can happen to a dog that's not pregnant or nursing, you can have a secondary infection that migrated from somewhere else in the body. So you can just have an infection that's somewhere that's not even related, and it w can migrate to the mammary glands. Um, and if that happens, it also could be a sign of mammary cancer. Um, but it's much more likely to happen into a lactating dog. Um, 
Um, so I'm just going to treat that. It kind of depends on severity. Um, with galactostasis, um, you can withhold water for six to tw um, 10 hours. I should withhold food for about 24 hours. Um, you should limit their feeding. Um, after you withhold food for 24 hours and you introduce food back in, you should limit it for um, about three days and um, possibly give them a diuretic. Right now you're just trying to um, decrease the amount of milk that's stuck in the mammary glands. So this is some ways just to help it kind of naturally before you need a veterinary intervention. Um, so for acute septic mastitis, um, sometimes antibiotics can be given. Um, and if that is, you should prevent the puppies from drinking from that tea because um, you don't want the antibiotics to kind of go into them. You can also do a warm compress um, that can help with the swelling. One thing I found really interesting, you can do a cabbage wrap, and I'll get into that later. That can help a lot. Um, there's also, you can trim the surrounding fur um, around them to kind of prevent reinfection because they're usually discharged, so it can collect around the fur and kind of create an unsanitary environment so the dog is likely to reinfect themselves again. Um, the vet may have to drain the tissue, um, just trying to get rid of that excess fluid. Um, and if it's really bad or reoccurs a lot, you can have the um, complete removal of the tissue. So is cabbage leaf therapy? Um, so this is for the common green cabbage. Um, and it works best if it's chilled, but there's actually ingredients in cabbages that can cause the capillaries to dilate. So it improves blood flow in and out of the affected area. So it kind of allows the body to reabsorb the trapped fluid that's in the mammary gland. Um, and it can relieve swelling. Um, you should, if you're going to do this, it's best if you, like, you crush the veins of the cabbages before use. Um, and it promotes healing. And you kind of drape the leaves around the inflamed area for 20 to 30 minutes every four to six hours for about one to two days or until the kind of engorgement subsides. So I just find it interesting, kind of like a natural way to help um, treat mastitis, especially if you catch it earlier. Um, so just kind of some prevention. Um, again, a common cause is when bacteria enters um, the, the nipple through injury. So if you um, should trim the puppy's nails frequently to kind of prevent them scratching at it. Um, in general, she keep the mammary glands in the overall environment that the dog's kept in clean. So she's in a whelping box still. Make sure it's just a sanitary environment. Because um, the more unsanitary it is, the more likely an infection will occur. Um, and kind of going with that, especially in your shorter dogs, like dachshunds, corgis, that just has their chest lower to the ground, they're more likely to get stuff um, on their mammary glands. So if it is open, infection can occur. Um, and she also encourage the puppies to use all the mammary glands. Sometimes puppies will continue just to go to the same tea. Um, and depending on the size of the litter, there could be one that's not used often, so it can get overfilled um, and not have proper leakage. So you try to just, you can manually pick up the puppies and kind of get them to one. Um, if none of the puppies really seem to want to go to that one, you can drain it yourself. But you just want to make sure that all of them are kind of being used equally. Um, you should also make sure the mom has proper nutrition because if she's not getting the proper nutrients in her diet, her immune system is going to be lower, so it's just going to be more open to infection. Um, something I just found interesting, again, doesn't always have to occur in pregnant or lactating females. Um, doesn't even have to occur in females at all. It's really rare, but mastitis can happen in men. Um, in theory, any creature that has mammary glands can get mastitis. So exclusions are like reptiles, avians, um, amphibians, because they don't have mammary glands. Okay. Any references? Continue. 